Section 4.5 is on page 242, and that talks about the dot product, the dot, dot of two vectors, and this is how it begins. If I think of vector v as a1, b1, and I think of vector w as a sub 2, b sub 2, then if I take the dot of those, if I take v dot w, you'll notice that is a1 times a2, b1 times b2, and you add this, which indicate this is a scalar. So if I dot two vectors, I'll take the i component times the i component plus the j times the j, and so on and so forth. Given two vectors, given vector v and vector u. If I look at the angle that's between them, we're talking about this angle, the angle between the two vectors, assuming it's between 0 and 90. At most, you are allowed to have those in opposite direction, which indicates parallel. I'll talk about parallel in a minute. Well, the cosine of the angle in between is the dot product of the two vectors divided by the magnitude of the first times the magnitude of the second. Now, if I take the dot product and I get that to be zero, assuming the vectors are not zero, I'm looking at a cosine of theta equals zero. If I have the cosine of theta equals zero, doesn't that mean theta is 90 degrees? That will indicate that those two are orthogonal. Orthogonal is nothing more than perpendicular. Fancy word. So, two vectors are orthogonal. They're perpendicular, if and only if, their dot product equals zero. So we're assuming here that the vectors themselves are not zero. And I'm adding one more to this. So we know how to find the dot product. We're going to practice that. I was going to do those individually, but the problems in this section ask for all of those three one shot. And it's very hard to separate. I know how to find the dot product. I'll take the i component times the i component the j times the j, and I add those. If I get the dot product to be zero, I know that the two vectors are perpendicular. And the fancy word for perpendicular is orthogonal. Now, if I dot the two vectors and I get a one or a negative one, that indicates that cosine equal one at zero, that means the angle between the two vectors are zero, and the vectors are literally matching or if the dark product is one not the dark product if this value is one then that means the angle between them is pi or 180 degrees and that's the definition of parallel let's make sure we understand what parallel means I'm going to get to that once I get to this last definition that I added the way we do this we take the dot product. If we get it to be zero, we know the two vectors are orthogonal. It's more efficient, I think, this is my opinion, my humble opinion, that if you could show that a vector is multiple of another vector, then the two vectors are parallel. So, definition of parallel. Most students think that two lines are parallel if they never meet. Uh, that's half of it. The definition really goes by two vectors that are identical or never meet are parallel. So, a vector and another vector in the same direction are parallel. A vector and a vector pointing in the opposite direction are also parallel. So, let's keep that in mind and let's see how this goes. And here they ask for three things in this section. That's the majority of the section, so a really short and easy section. A, given those two vectors, find the dot product. I'm going to write V as 1, 1, and W as negative 1, 1. 
So if I do part A and take V dot W, what that is, I'm going to multiply the I times the I, that's a negative 1, plus I'm going to multiply the J times the J. And I'm going to get that to be a 0, negative 1 plus 1 equals 0, B. Find the angle between those. Well, if I know that this angle is 0, if I know that, that the dot product is 0, and I'm going to use the formula cosine of theta equals V dot W divided by magnitude of V magnitude of W. By the way, I am going to provide, I will provide this formula on your test. You really don't need to memorize that. That would be 0 divided. The magnitude of this vector is radical 2. The magnitude of this vector is radical 2. But it doesn't matter because 0 over any non-zero number is 0. And if I know that cosine of theta equals 0, well, that happens when theta equals 90 degrees. So there it is. And C, well, if the angle is 90 degrees, This is perpendicular, and the fancy word is orthogonal. Sounds like a type of medicine, right? A doctor. Another problem I want to look at is problem number 14. The next problem up is number 14. And of course, you can't have a vector that's both perpendicular and parallel at the same time. It doesn't make sense. You can graph this, but that's not the point. If I take v dot w, that would be 1 times 1, that's 1, plus a radical 3 times negative 1 is negative radical 3, so I'm getting 1 minus radical 3. B. Find the angle between them. The cosine of theta is V dot W. I just found that in part A. 1 minus radical 3 over. And how does that work? What's the magnitude of going 1 to the right, radical 3 up? Isn't that a 2? And what's the magnitude of moving 1 to the right, 1 down? Isn't that radical 2? And if I get that cosine of theta to equal 1 minus radical 3 over 2 radical 2, guess what? Plug this in my calculator, and I'm getting 105 degrees. So when they ask in part C, are those parallel, perpendicular, or neither? Well, obviously, it's neither in this case. Oops, wrong guy. All right, the next problem I want to look at would be problem number 16. <coughs> and here I would say, well, all right, part A, find V dot W. That would be 3 times 27 plus negative 4 times negative 12 is 48. And that would get me a 70. Part B, find the angle between those. Well, if I take the cosine of theta, that would be V dot W divided by magnitude of V, the magnitude of W. Well, that is 75 over, what's the magnitude of this? 3, 4, isn't that a 5? And what's the magnitude of this? 9, 12, 9 negative 12, that would be square root of 81 plus 144, that's 225, that's 25. And do you see that this is a 1? And if cosine of theta equal 1, isn't the angle 180 degrees because cosine equal 1, uh, I'm sorry, 0, not 180, what's wrong with me? 0, isn't it 0 right there? Part C, we say those are parallel. Also, we could say, look, if you take V, multiply it by 3. 
wouldn't that get you 3 times 3 negative 4 isn't that 9 negative 12 which is W those are next to each other therefore those are parallel the last main use of the dot product and I'll try to derive this formula for you at the end if I have time you know I'm at 10 minutes and 10 seconds if I have time I'll derive it it's a really easy to derive and extremely important to know work equals force times the distance if I can write the work as a vector and the distance as a vector then the dot product of those two will give me work now there's a catch normally but if you could write them as vectors there it is and if I look at number 30 this is what it says a wagon is pulled horizontally a wagon is pulled horizontally by exerting a force of 20 pounds on the handle that makes an angle of 30 degrees with the horizontal about 30 degrees and let's say this is 20 pounds and this is 30 degrees how much work is done by moving the wagon 100 feet you do figure out that you're moving in this direction 100 feet now wouldn't you say the work now wouldn't you say the force and this is the part that I'm supposed to divide wouldn't you say the force isn't that 20 the cosine of 30 degrees 20 the sine of 30 degrees wouldn't you say this force is actually 20 times this is radical 3 over 2 and this is 1 half so my actual force is 10 radical 3 and 10 the distance the distance that I want to move this in if I say that's a B well isn't that a and that's B wouldn't that be simply 100 0 so if I want to find work wouldn't you say that's the force times the distance in vector form force is 10 radical 3 10 and the distance is a hundred zero wouldn't you say work is a thousand radical three and that's going to be feet pounds and that would be it and that's one of the main uses two uses i use the dot product for more than anything one to figure out if two vectors are orthogonal which is a big deal for me in applications <coughs> and the second to find work now I do have some time to discuss this the way it works normally you know if they don't allow me to bring this up I'll just cut it off you know what let me give you the homework so the homework is listed right there page 257 and it seems I forgot to write that down yeah right there okay page 257 there's the homework now let me talk about deriving this if I could that would be nice the way